There are a lot of policies that end up increasing the risk of crime when they are supposed to be helping to decrease it. One example of that would be pretrial detention. I think there is an implicit assumption that if you put someone away pretrial, that'll help reduce crime because they'll be locked away and therefore they can't commit a crime. But if you think about all the people that we're locking away pretrial and we're putting them in situations where they now can't go to their jobs, so they're probably gonna lose their jobs. They are gonna be separated from their loved ones and their social networks, and that's very disruptive. They may find themselves losing custody of children or childcare arrangements while they're locked away. It's very disruptive to take somebody and put them away. And as it turns out, when you look at studies of pretrial detention, what we find is the detention itself causes crime. People are more likely to commit crimes when they get out of pretrial detention, all else being equal, um, precisely because of those disruptive effects. You know, another thing would be longer prison sentences. Same kind of idea, you get an incapacitative benefit by putting somebody in prison, but if you think about the fact that the longer someone stays in prison, the harder it's going to be when they come out. And you know, 95% of all people in prison are released back out into society and communities. And one White House report found that for every additional year that someone stays in prison, there's a four to seven percent increase uh, in the likelihood of them reoffending. You know, precisely because it's so much harder for them when they come out. So that would be another one of those policies that you'd really want to balance the benefit you get from incapacitation against the harder reentry consequences later. You know, a third example I would give would be collateral consequences for people who have criminal records. So we make it so that people often can't get government benefits. Um, they may lose their license, their driver's license. They don't have access, the same kind of access to public housing and various other benefits. And they're really just all these obstacles for people to be able to successfully reintegrate into their communities. And some people who supported those thought, well, these will be deterrents. You know, people will think twice before they commit a crime, knowing all these consequences will follow. When in fact, they don't act as deterrents and all they do is really make it difficult for people to successfully re-enter later. So, you know, those policies really end up backfiring as a question of public safety.